This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Danger, Answer Files! Danger! It's a toy. Boop. Robots in popular culture line up into one of two categories, either killing machines that are going to wipe out humanity, or lovable companions that are going to make our lives more happy and fulfilled. Not really much in the middle. Like a million other technologies, we've reached something of an inflection point with robotics, where the stuff that we've known in science fiction is now starting to become real. Today, robots are all around us, in our factories, in our places of business, in our homes, and their impacts are already starting to be felt. But what we're seeing right now is just the tip of the iceberg. The future of robotics is crazy, and so is the world that they, and we, are going to be living in. The idea of robots has been around for almost 100 years, but the first recorded instance of it in literature was in the 1921 play R.U.R., or Rossum's Universal Robots. The word robot comes from the Czech word robota, which means forced labor. I'm sure that's nothing they'll hold against us someday. Interestingly, the robots in this play were not made of metal, but a type of chemical batter. Yummy. It should be noted that the groundwork for robotics was laid a long time ago in something called automatons, which were these lifelike figures that could move and act in you know, very natural ways. They weren't useful for anything, they were more novelty items, but their intricacy and accuracy of movement and whatnot was uh, pretty amazing and creepy. Yeah, there's some cool videos I'll link to down in the description. I'm uh, strangely fascinated by these things. Now before we go too far into the present and future of robots, we should probably define exactly what a robot is, which is easier said than done. For example, there's some amazing robotic prosthetics out there right now, but does a prosthetic arm equal a robot? For now, I'm going to say no and just save that topic for a later video, which it definitely deserves. But for today, let's use the definition that I'm totally stealing from Wired Magazine. A robot is an intelligent, physically embodied machine. A robot can perform tasks autonomously and a robot can sense and manipulate its environment. So considering these parameters, robots generally fall into these four categories. Industrial robots, service and companion robots, military and rescue robots, and exploratory robots. Industrial robots are the ones that have been around the longest and the ones that are making the biggest impact on our society right now, but as Tesla Motors recently found out, they do have their limits. Tesla's original plan for their Fremont factory was to build what Elon Musk called the alien dreadnought, basically the machine that makes the machine. He even once speculated that designing automated factories for other companies might be a big revenue stream for Tesla in the future. Yeah, he was wrong about that. Turns out he got too big for his robot bridges. He actually admitted earlier this year that they relied a little bit too heavily on automation, that there are some things that human beings are just better at, so they had to scale their automation back a bit. But that doesn't mean that automation doesn't have a role in manufacturing, or that the whole full automation thing isn't going to happen sometime down the road. According to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the top five jobs for robots in factories are drilling and fastening, inspection, welding, painting and sealing, and collaborative assembly. But with the rise of machine learning and advanced AI could run simulations of different processes a thousand times over to come up with the most efficient and productive workflow possible, and then coordinate dozens of robotic arms to do it perfectly. One of the most advanced assembly plants in the world is the Chinese car company Great Wall Motors. They've got a robot-to-robot -robot assembly line that can do 4,000 welds in 86 seconds. And Foxconn, the Taiwanese company that builds iPhones for Apple, announced that they're going to be increasing their automation by 30% by the year 2020. And then there's the automated factory robots that are famously employed at Amazon's fulfillment centers known as AMRs, or Autonomous Mobile Robotics. These all coordinate with each other to shuttle goods through warehouses with no human intervention whatsoever. But Amazon isn't alone here. In fact, it's gotten to where any warehousing or large logistics company is, they, they have to use AMRs just to stay competitive. But of course there's a downside to all this automation and that's the loss of human jobs. Now many people would argue that the jobs that remain are going to be safer because the robots are doing all the heavy lifting, literally, and that the people who do get laid off can move on and, and do other things in other places and might open up more opportunities, but that doesn't change the fact that there are going to be a huge loss of jobs and society is going to have to adjust to that. In fact, when Foxconn announced their automation goal by 2020, they also announced that they had already automated out 60,000 jobs at one of their factories. Granted, those are the kind of jobs that had people jumping off the roof, but still. Now, industrial robots are useful, but the problem is you can't fall in love with an industrial robot. Or I guess you could. Pervert. 
But there's another type of robot that's all about human interaction, and these are service and companion robots. Security robots like you see in malls and airports, retail robots that can guide you through a store or bag your groceries, a chef robot that can learn to cook you dinner just by watching a video of somebody preparing the same recipe, and of course the robot vacuum cleaner slash kitty uber. I actually had an old Roomba robot, but it stopped working. It sucked. Get it? Because it's a vacuum? <laughs> oh, I know. By the way, the newest Roomba models actually use a LiDAR system to create a 3D scan of the rooms that they're in so they can better navigate everything. And the company, iRobot, actually got into a little bit of hot water because they found out that they were selling these scans of their customers' homes to third parties. Dystopia! But the ultimate service robot is one that can see to the needs of a human being, both physically and emotionally. These are more than just tools, but in addition to your household, like a family member or a staff member. So they have to be relatable, even lovable. Honda was one of the first to tackle this challenge with Asimo, which was first revealed in the year 2000. Asimo is a walking, talking, humanoid robot that has a fair amount of psychology integrated into its design. For example, Asimo stands at about 4.25 feet tall, which Honda engineers settled on because the short stature makes Asimo more endearing and childlike. But it's tall enough to easily open doors and reach regular sized countertops. Asimo can run, jump, kick a soccer ball, recognize faces, and interact with people via pre-programmed gestures and responses. This is mostly a demonstration project, but the technologies engineered by Asimo have led to the walking assist devices to help mobility impaired people stand and walk like normal. Also, I just found out that Honda officially ended the Asimo program last month. So there's that. But there's a ton of other cool personal assistant robots in the works, including robots to help care for elderly people like Romeo from SoftBank Robotics. This one's a humanoid much like Asimo and designed to help people walk around and fetch items from around the home. Pepper is a wheeled robot, also from SoftBank, that has facial recognition and is programmed to understand emotion in people's faces and voices. This is more of a companion robot, not designed so much for functionality around the home, but to provide comfort and company to those who need it. There's also Ido, which raised nearly a million dollars on Indiegogo. This is kind of like if Siri or Alexa took physical form and could wander through your house. Ido can offer information when needed, project light, help with cooking, welcome guests, and integrate with smart home technology to keep the lights and temperature where you want it to be. It also patrols the house and monitors for security when you're not there. Also worth mentioning is Milo, an educational robot for children with autism. It works with kids to teach lessons that help them with socialization and recognizing facial cues, which has shown a lot of promise in early studies. These represent the type of robots that could be finding our way into our homes in the next 20 or 30 years. Someday it might be perfectly normal to have a robot butler that, you know, gets you up in the morning and washes your clothes and does the dishes for you. It might be like just having a vacuum cleaner today. Now let's talk about military robots because there's nothing more fun than automated weaponry, and by fun, I mean terrifying. From robotic tanks to automated guard dogs to tiny surveillance drones to ordnance busting minesweepers, the future of war is robotic and gets into some hairy ethical dilemmas. On one hand, sending robots into combat zones could save a lot of lives. I mean, if you have the ability to send a robot in instead of a human being, um, you could almost argue that it's unethical not to. Of course, it could also be argued that it's unethical to send advanced technology in against an enemy that doesn't have that same technology. But that's warfare. The entire history of warfare is a history of developing new tools to defeat the enemy, and then new tactics by the enemy to defeat those tools. You do, however, enter a whole new ethical minefield, uh, pun intended, when those tools start making decisions about who to kill. Now this starts getting into artificial intelligence and machine learning topics that I'm gonna kind of push aside from this video so that they're not go down that rabbit hole, but suffice to say that there is an AI arms race starting up right now that's gonna completely change the face of warfare as we know it. But not all military robots are killing machines. Some of them can carry out rescue missions and go places where humans can't go into. And when you get into these heavy duty rescue type robots, nobody sets nerds hearts aflutter more than Boston Dynamics. You've seen their work on social media and in memes and depending on what kind of person you are, you're either amazed or terrified or both. The Boston Dynamics Atlas robot is a bipedal six foot tall robot overseen by DARPA and designed for search and rescue in all kinds of terrain. First unveiled in 2013, the Atlas team has been continually refining the robot and giving it enhanced abilities to make it as stable as possible on concrete, rocky terrain, snow, you name it, and with their most recent videos showing it jumping onto platforms of various heights and even doing a backflip. Which I could totally do if I was hanging onto a robot doing a backflip. The other star in their lineup is called the Spot Mini. This terrifyingly adorable robo-dog runs on four legs and features an extendable head slash hand, head, hand? What is that thing? 
The Spot Mini can run at a fast speed, open doors, go upstairs, jump over obstacles, and literally can't be knocked down. Although the team at Boston Dynamics has tried, often, to knock their robots down, something that I'm sure future sentient robots will be super chill about and will in no way use as a reason to wipe us out. Way to go there, Wayne Gretzky. Sometimes we want to go to places that wouldn't murder us instantly, and for that, there's exploratory robots. And nobody does exploratory robots better than NASA. From Voyager to Cassini to Juno and New Horizons, NASA and the ESA and other space agencies have been probing the depths of space with robotic probes that have sent back priceless information about our corner of the galaxy. Now you might argue that space probes don't quite qualify as a robot because they don't have autonomy. They're almost more like remote control devices, but in the vastness of space you do need a little bit of autonomy. Juno, for example, around Jupiter can take up to 48 minutes for its signal to reach Earth, which means that if it needs to direction from us, it might take an hour and a half before it gets there, so it needs to be able to make decisions on the fly. And that's mostly not a problem for a craft that's just kind of floating around out in space, but if it's a probe that's on the ground, automation becomes a lot more necessary. The Curiosity rover on Mars, for example, has autonomous navigation. This lets it determine the best path across rough terrain. It can also scan the landscape for different types of rocks and autonomously decide whether or not it's worth drilling into it and analyzing it. In the future, as our space probes travel even further out into space and take on more complex tasks like digging and even construction, autonomy is going to become even more necessary. Scientists from JPL said that future robot space probes are going to have a level of artificial intelligence that would allow them to work completely autonomously without human direction whatsoever. This could spur the construction of mega projects in space and even interstellar travel, distances that would make any kind of normal communication impossible. Robots don't need food, water, oxygen, protection from cosmic rays, and they never die. The fact is, the first contact that we make with another solar system won't be us. It'll be our robots. Which brings me to the biggest point here, which is that maybe the thing that we fear the most about robots is that, in essence, robots are just an extension of ourselves. In the far future, intelligent robots might be the key to our continuation as a species. It offers an immortality of sorts. And possibly a literal immortality if we're able to achieve mind uploading technology. We could upload our consciousness into an artificial avatar that could continue on beyond our bodies. In fact, the 2045 initiative is working on exactly that. So, assuming robots don't destroy us, uh, they'll probably become us. And what happens from there, we can only imagine. Now this was meant to just sort of paint a picture of where we are right now with robotics. A lot of the projects that I talked about here are not really out there in any usable form. They're mostly demonstration things. Um, robotics is still searching for that killer app that brings them into the mainstream. Killer app sounds a lot worse when you're talking about robots. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Which one of these do you think has the best chance for success? Which one of these will change society the most? And how doomed are we? Tell me what you think below. If you're interested in artificial intelligence and the technology that drives these kinds of robots, I'll put some links down in the description below. But if you really want to take a serious deep dive into computer science and artificial neural networks and whatnot, you definitely need to check out Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a learning platform with a twist. Instead of just hitting you in the face with a fire hose of information, they spritz you with a gentle mist of puzzles and games that help you to kind of figure out core scientific concepts on your own. There's a whole series of courses on Brilliant about computer science, everything from basic algorithms to machine learning to artificial neural networks. You can sign up for free at Brilliant.org slash Answers with Joe and get access to their free weekly brain teasers and puzzles and the first 200 people that sign up uh, for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses will get 20% off your subscription until the noble robot overlords finally clear this planet of the human scum. What? Being cautious. Links down in the description. Brilliant.org slash Answers with Joe. Go get some. Thanks a bunch to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and a big huge shout out to my answer files on Patreon who help keep the lights on around here and have formed just an amazing community that gives me all kinds of support and ideas and I really do appreciate all of you. There are some new members of the tribe. I gotta murder their names real quick. Some of these are doozies. We got Nicholas DeJong, uh, Stagger Lee, Ratan Ben Shimon, uh, Edward, Edmund Velasco, Bert Newman, here we go, Dr. Arn Bobin Heinzer Hyde, Mark L. Bennett, Mike Cummins Jr., Coda Holic, Ed Fence, Michael Burke, David Ruthven, Snappy Your Soap 318, KJTB8, uh, Adrian Merle, Amy Smith, Kyle Goddard, uh, Arnold Mikonis, yeah, Boris Chekalin, Ty Skinner, Raymond Ng, Jan Sindler, and Walter Delson. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get access to uh, me and the whole community and get to be a part of this whole thing, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, check out some of my other videos on similar topics. You might like those too. And if you do and you want to see more, hit subscribe. 
I'll come back with videos just like this every Monday. Thanks so much for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening week, and I'll catch you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.